Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God, our Father, and our Lord, and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Brothers and sisters in Christ, the world is constantly changing. And the more it changes, the more we recognize that it really just stays the same. As King Solomon once said, there's nothing new under the sun. The challenges in each generation may change, but when you boil them down, what remains is the same issue that every generation faces. I hope you believe me when I say that the church today faces the same challenges that it faced 2,000 years ago. You see, we're, we're running and working with the same software that there's always been, with the same bugs and the same glitches. We've just updated the hardware with more bells and whistles. What I mean by that is that our, our human nature hasn't changed, but our technological dependencies have. Is, that is, the sin that is in our nature still remains. It persists, and it corrupts the updated hardware. So when I say that churches today argue over what songs to sing during the divine service, or what banners to hang in the sanctuary, or what brand of wine we use during Holy Communion, I hope you'll understand that these kind of road bumps were hit long before Zion Indicator was ever founded. There are churches that will, even worse, throughout history, whose main focus is on something else. It's on, I don't know, having a positive youth group, a good influence in the youth group. Maybe focusing on missionary trips rather than something else. Maybe it's putting butts in the pews. These, there's churches throughout history who have removed a called and ordained pastor from his office for not living up to the expectations of one of these topics, not fulfilling what they want to do or because the pastor appeared weak or fearful, so fearful that he could be seen trembling. Or as often as the case, this pastor said things that people just didn't want to hear. People will often get it into their heads that they can fix the problems of the church. This is what the Corinthians thought. If you remember a couple weeks back, we talked about 1 Corinthians chapter 1, where St. Paul reveals to us that the visions that they were having, the problems that they were having. Each one of them thought that they were wiser than the next guy and that they had the right plan and that they followed the right preacher. Today we might think of the person with good intentions and in faith brings their better business practices into the church in order to help her run more efficiently. If the church does it this way, the board of finance, the board of education, or the trustees follow these easy steps. If the pastor preaches about practical life skills, how to live your best life now, or if he gives us a list of how to stop sinning A, B, or C, then, then we will make the church great again. I'm not saying that there isn't a better way to do church finances or maintenance. There's always something better we can do. The blessing of worldly wisdom might be exactly what the congregation needs in an administrative sense. But that is where that worldly wisdom needs to stop. For worldly wisdom has its limitations. The wisdom of this age, like every age before it, and every age after it, is passing away. That's because this wisdom is saturated with sin, no matter what good it can do. Worldly wisdom, the wisdom of men, leads us to one place. Leads us to hell. Leads us to damnation. Our wisdom cannot reveal to us the one thing we need to know. St. Paul knew this. He recognized it in his own age and in the wisdom of the men living in Corinth and in Jerusalem. And he writes... None of the rulers of this age understood this, for if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. If our wisdom 
could understand who Jesus was on our own, if our wisdom could lead us to confess that Jesus is Lord, he would never have needed to die. The wisdom of men is what put Christ on the cross. See, they saw the power that he had. They saw the good that he did, and they heard the wisdom that he preached and taught. And in their wisdom, they plotted against him. And if we rest in our wisdom, that is all we will see, just like the Pharisees. But as it was written, what no eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor the heart of man imagined, what good has God prepared for those who love him? The death of God could not have been imagined by men. For no one can comprehend the thoughts of God except the Spirit of God. But the death of God was revealed to us by that same Spirit. The death of Jesus on the cross is folly to those who are perishing, but to us, to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. This is why St. Paul says, I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. Paul's faith didn't rest in the wisdom of men. It didn't rest in the Corinthians' ability to balance their books. It didn't rest in their preacher's ability to give you better life skills. Paul's faith, our faith, rests in the power of God. In Jesus Christ crucified. This is the wisdom that our pastors need to preach. Jesus Christ crucified for the sins of the entire world. Your sins are forgiven. Your sins are removed from you as far as the east is from the west. More than that, your sins are forgotten by the Father. That's because he already punished them when they were poured over Jesus' head in his baptism. And they remained with him until his death. So Christ commands us to be baptized in his name. When the water is poured over our head, his righteousness is poured over us. In our baptism, the wisdom of the world is washed away, and the wisdom of God, the power of God, the Spirit of God is what remains. So that God can give us faith. And so that in that faith, we will understand the things that are freely given to us by God. Namely, forgiveness of sins, life and salvation. For where there is forgiveness of sins, there is also life and salvation every time. Because Christ did not remain dead. He rose from the grave showing that we too will rise. Sinless, perfect, just like him. Better business practices that improve the stewardship of a congregation, they're fine. It's actually a good thing. A full sanctuary is something to be thankful for. A solid youth group in a mission-minded church is very commendable. Living a sanctified life, preventing ourselves from sinning, it's important. And that's a goal we are going to continue to fight for and have to struggle with until we are dead. But all of it, in all of it, we must know only one thing. Jesus Christ and him crucified. If Christ did not die for our sins, we remain in our sins. They are bound to us. If we rely on our wisdom, we will die with the world. But if we rely on God's wisdom, which only comes through faith given by the Spirit, we will live with God. If we don't have Christ, we don't have anything. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now may the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God be with us always. Amen.